Hello guys, this is Happy Tech here, and I'm back with another video. But this time I'll be doing an entry level X99 build. So this is what I would suggest getting if you want to get into the X99 platform. This is uh, uh, these are the components that uh, I would uh, advise you get if you uh, if you want to upgrade to an X99 system. And if you plan on going with the new Skylake which was released yesterday then I would recommend that you stick uh, you go to for the X99 build because I think it's gonna last longer and from what we've seen so far the Skylake CPU is only gain about 10% I, I think it was about 10% more than the previous Haswell CPUs like the previous i7s and i5s uh, but this should give you more performance and better value for your money since the price for like the 7 the process I'm using which is the i7 5820k it's pretty close to the i7 it's gonna be pretty close to the i7 60, uh, 6700k so and for that for that little pri di pr price difference you gain extra 2 cores and 4 threads so um, that would be my suggestion so I know it's the different the 6700K is probably going to be more power efficient since it's a smaller node, so it's 40 nanometers. But uh, this should still give you better performance. Okay, let's get on with the build. And I need to mention this: um, I'm using different suppliers for the CPU. Uh, I'm using Aria PC, as you get a better deal there. But if you're not comfortable with Aria PC, you can get from. Um, Amazon still for about eight pounds more, so it's up to you if you're not comfortable using RAPC. Uh, the price of this build is pretty, uh, it's pretty expensive since X99s. Uh, you have to you have DDR4 uh, RAM, which is a lot more expensive, but it's coming down in price. And the X99 motherboard is quite expensive as well. Uh, but let's get on with the build and the price of the build is about 1500 pounds so keep that in mind and the first component is as I said before it's the Intel Core i7 5820k it's, uh, stock clock is 3.3 GHz but w you can easily overclock that up to about 4 GHz uh, with a, a decent cooler um, at the moment it's just under 300 pounds which is a good price for a 6 core eight, uh, 12 thread processor should be very good for, for for gaming is a bit of overkill but for editing it's pretty good it's gonna be should be able to edit and render videos uh, very quickly in Adobe Premiere After Effects and all that I should have no problem doing that and gaming as well should with uh, two of threads in total it should be pretty good for gaming as well a bit of overkill since the games don't uh, required that many threads but uh, you should keep up with uh, new games coming out which could require more cores um, next is the CPU cooler and this is important because it's going to determine how big of an overclock we got and I st uh, I'm sticking with air cooling for this one I haven't chosen a, a liquid cooler or a all in one liquid cooler uh, because air is still p plenty enough for uh, cooling a CPU without needing to go liquid cooling and I chose a very good airflow uh, CPU cooler it's the Be Quiet Dark Rock 3 so this is going to be s extremely silent probably more silent than the all-in-one liquid coolers which have on top of the fan noise you still have uh, uh, the pump noise which does make pretty quite a lot of noise so it's going to be a, uh, a lot more quieter than that and it's still going to be plenty of uh, cooling to cool the CPU and give us a decent overclock to about 4.4 GHz without any problems and next is the motherboard and I chose the MSI's X99S SLI Plus motherboard so this is a uh, X99 board on the LGA 2011 3 uh, socket which is what the Hazo E CPUs are using like the i7 and it's an overall very good motherboard looks great it's all blacked out which is gonna pr look pretty nice uh, you, you can go up to you can, it's called SLI as it's called SLI plus and I think it's 
freeway SLI or up to freeway SLI which is plenty you don't need any more than that uh, it supports up to 120 gigs of RAM which you don't really use it's got the 8 dims so you, you do support quad channel memory of DDR4 and these X9, X99 chips it's a 480x board and there's RAID support there's also crossfire support which you could use if you want but this is a there's no cards that AMD offers at the moment that are well, we can use a Fury if you want but for this build we will be using a uh, AVGA it will be using the NVIDIA's sorry uh, next is the RAM and this is uh, I've chosen the Corsair v, uh, Vengeance LPX 16 gig kit so 4x4 four four, so we can use uh, quad channel it's DDR4 20 clocked at 2666 megahertz and at the moment it's 123 uh, pounds which is more expensive than DDR3 but it's very good for the for what uh, for DDR memory DDR4 memory as it used to be a like, hundred pounds more a few a few months ago I think so it's overall a very good price and next is the storage I chose with a single uh, Samsung A50 versus D of t with uh, 500 gigs uh, should be enough storage and fast storage but if this is not enough storage then you can buy it one terabyte hard drive for um, all your backups and movies downloads all, all that kind of stuff and um, if you don't want to buy a new one, um, you can use uh, one that you might already have in your old system, but this should give you enough performance so you can just install your OS on this and have plenty of storage for like some of your most played games, which can improve their loading times. Uh, next is a graphics card, which is one of the best cards you can get right now in terms of value for money. It's, it's got 6 gigs of RAM, extremely overclockable. Uh, this is the Zotac version of the Zotac Amp Edition. Uh, it's a very good card with free, uh, uh, free fans. It's gonna allow you to overclock it a lot better. The GTX 980 Ti is one of the best graphics cards you can get at the moment, as I said before. And Zotac is known for making decent graphics cards, so it's not as well known as the Asus Gigabyte and AVGA, but. Um, or uh, also makes pretty. The amp edition is uh, it's very good, and I'll suggest getting that. But if you want a gigabyte one or Asus one, their versions are a bit more expensive. Like the the gigabytes G1 gaming is like thirty pounds more. So I'll get this dish, uh, get this card as it's uh, still very good. And next is the case. The, for the case, I chose the uh, refractor design Define S with a window. It does have a, wind, a big side window, plenty of open space. You don't have the drive cages and uh, disc, disc drive cages like the five and a quarter inch bays and um, 3.5 inch uh, base for your hard drive seats. All that's removed, all that's stored uh, in the back, in the back of the the case. So it's all hidden away. You don't have to see it. Uh, and it's overall very good design. It's very, it's pretty much outside. It looks the same as the R5. Uh, it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit cheaper, so uh, it's still pretty good for uh, price for money. So I suggest getting it. It's not as silent. I don't think it's, as, it's got as much silent protection as the R5. But if you're going for silent, then the R5 will be your choice. And next is the power supply, and this is an important component as the i7, especially overclocked, is gonna use quite a lot of power and the graphics card as well overclock so if you're overclocking both it's gonna be pretty high power consumption that's why I compensate for that with a 850 watt power supply which is a bit of an overkill for this system but in extreme overclock situations when you're running at 24 if you're running at 24 7 this is gonna be very good and it's gonna have plenty of power so it's 80 plus gold it's the AVJ 850 watt uh, power supply 80 plus gold um, so it's gold rated, so it's got a very good efficiency, uh, and it's about 100 pounds, which is a good price for an 850 watt gold power supply. And this is it for the build, guys. Hope you enjoy it, and see you in the next video.